Chris and Sean. Today we're um, having a conversation about labor and what it is to uh, be a worker in the current economic and political environment. Um, so let's just continue what we've been saying. Chris? Um, you know, I think what we've been saying is people are working harder for less money. I think that's probably a given right now, and we see that happening just again and again and again everywhere you go. Um, I think Sean and I particularly see that because we've had so much time in the work world. You know, I'm thinking of my own retirement soon, and it's hard to believe I have been an employee for almost 50 years. I mean, that's really nuts when you think about it. Such a big chunk of my life devoted to working for other people and places. Mm -hmm. um, Richard Wolf put it out. Pretty, uh, a good uh, demonstration on uh, what has ha happened in, to wages in the uh, work world. Now, um, the uh, economy, the uh, corporations have increased their profits over, you know, at one point he said it was over 1,300%. Um, Productivity has also gone up significantly since the 1970s. Workers' wages have not. They've stayed pretty much the same. Anything that uh, the workers' wages have gained have been taken away with the uh, um, cost of living increases. So therefore, we are working for nothing <laughs> compared to what we were working for before. Yeah. Uh, we've all become wage slaves. Mm -hmm. Wage slaves indeed, yeah. And I think we, we had a conversation a little earlier about um, how we come to um, psychologically be tied to our jobs in such a way that I believe that it really becomes abusive to workers in general. You know, we are defined by the type of jobs that we have in our culture. <clears throat> you know, our kind of worth as citizens seems to come from the fact that uh, we work in certain fields. Uh, there are certain fields that are worthwhile, certain fields that aren't worthwhile. Um, you know, and I think a lot of this is evident by um, what we see happening in California with uh, the Mexicans, the undocumented immigrants that do all the jobs that people don't want to do. You know, those are the cast-off jobs. Those are the, the jobs that are so low on the totem pole that they, that makes people hardly count. And, you know, it's just, it's really, um, I think, uh, a very sad thought about society in general, you know, all of our good intentions for having a more egalitarian, a more equal society, it's not happening. As a matter of fact, it seems to be spreading people further and further apart. Well, it's not happening for us. The corporations are loving it. They are loving it, is right, yeah, yeah. And they will continue to, to love it, you know, because they can manipulate us as a as a people, you know, they've pushed and pushed these various thoughts into our heads so that folks don't uh, mind working more. Folks believe that that is such a big part of their life and that they should be doing this. I, you were talking about the percentage of time that we spend on the job, you know, being out of uh, the job. What were those? those uh, well, eight hours a day working, just eight hours a day. People are actually working longer hours, but eight hours a day, that's a third of our life. Eight hours a day sleeping is a third of our life. The rest of the time you're worried about your job and what you need to do to keep prepared for it. Mm -hmm. To maintain it, whether it be clothing mm -hmm. or getting your car repaired, you know, making sure that the kids are taken care of, blah, blah, blah. The work you do at home. The work you do at home. That you don't right. get compensated for. Mm-hmm. Right. So the more that we're doing the bidding of the corporations, the more that we're losing 
our sense of self. The more that we are losing our connections with who we are as individuals, we're losing our meaning in life. Um, I've got all of these existential kind of theories on what is going on, you know, but I, I think that that probably requires more and more videos to expand on that. Suffice to say that, yeah, the corporations are just really stomping all over us and, you know, making us prisoners of this work world. Now, the quick answer for me, and I know this needs unpacking, like you say, in more videos, um, is, you know, what I say all along about, or rather all the time about um, living as local as you can, and that includes working local. Working local, you know, yeah. And that's not going to be an easy switch because we're so used to, you know, depending on corporations for everything, right? yeah. including our livelihood. Well, that's one of the problems with the oil and gas industry. They funded uh, the move to suburbia, the move out of cities. Mm -hmm. The cities, you know, if you try to live in a city, especially if you're poor, you have no no resources to There's get no food or stores, clothing right? or anything. Mm -hmm. You know, they're yeah. food deserts. Uh, you have to go out of, to the suburbs to find a gas station. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to yeah. a grocery yeah. store, to your doctor's. There's very few doctors in the city anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. And if right. they're and the hospitals are all trying to move out to the suburbs. It's now not. in Cleveland, there's something interesting happening. Um, people are moving downtown again, mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm not sure, but I know actually in the downtown area, there's a lot of local. You know, there's a lot of local stuff happening. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that is restaurants and entertainment, and I heard some I heard some commentary not too long ago that you shouldn't like rebuild the city on entertainment. You, that you need to include more than that. Right. Um, however, you know it's nice to see. As such as the the, uh, the what's going on in Youngstown, we have tons of bars and restaurants in downtown Youngstown. Mm -hmm. That's what's growing. I mean, we do have our shares of wonderful museums there. We have the Labor Museum. We have the Butler Art Museum. There's a lot of good culture there, too. But as far as being able to live downtown and actually walk to a grocery store, like yeah. Sean said, walk to the doctor or the dentist, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's nothing that's real comprehensive there. You know, you've got to go out to the suburbs and do whatever sort of significant activities you need to exactly. live your life. Exactly. Just for basic, basic, you know, life activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I've defined uh, public transportation in not only Youngstown, a uh, warn it's non-existent. But, uh, Except the one bus that comes one from One bus that comes from Youngstown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I defined our a public transportation system in Youngstown is taking poor people to their minimum wage jobs. Right. And, right. <laughs> and hopefully back home. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, something that I've been thinking a lot lately, I mean, you know, it used to be different. There used to be buses running every hour, like in the 60s. That's right. You know, when the whole economy fell apart and the public transportation fell apart and the, you know, was when the <coughs> steel mills moved. Mm -hmm. And it strikes me now, specifically in this area, you know, how everything was built on that. Yeah. You know, and these corporations just have no you know, have no qualms about ripping, yeah. you know, local local areas apart. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, moving where they can make more money. Something I saw in the news just recently that uh, Youngstown was giving it, given a public transportation grant for uh, the city, and the mayor has decided that he wants to increase the transportation around YSU, <laughs> which is you know, a small fraction of the part of the city. Right. right. So <laughs> Yeah, we're we're just not a transportation friendly kind of a city. No. Well that's <laughs> been set up because of the uh, the influence of the uh, fossil fuel industry and the automotive industry. That's just, why you don't have uh, public transportation in Warren. Mm-hmm. 
And just like Joe referred to a few minutes ago about how these companies come in, they do their nasty business, and then they leave. I mean, isn't that evident of the fracking industry? You oh, know? Yeah. We right. see them do that everywhere. You know, they come in, they right. tear up roads, you know, they tear up whatever they need to tear up in order to put their pads and whatever. You know, they create horrible smells and bright lights and loud noises for residents around where they're, they're fracking. You know, and then they leave. You know, and people mm -hmm. are stuck with this bill of goods, you know, thinking, oh, wow, it's going to be jobs for us. You know, we're going to have a boost to our economy. And it has a material. Totally, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And it's just about corporations making money. And, That's just like they know. do in so many different mm -hmm. other venues, yes. Mm -hmm. In our last 30 seconds, final thoughts. Well, I'm, I'm going to really look forward to seeing our video next week when uh, Rob Carrillo is going to be talking more about local resources and how we can access. Um, you want to say anything else? Well, I just want to mention the uh, look to the military industrial complexes as, right. as the big source of a lot of our problems. And Dwight Eisenhower warned us back in the 50s. Right. I'll link that video in the um, comments below. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, thank Joe. Bye, everybody.